Hi everyone, Susan Gerbeck from Psychics Explained. We're going to look at something that is old. Um, I don't remember what year this is. I think Matt Fraser is 25 or 27. This is before the New York Times article um, by Jack Hitt come, came out uh, with Operation Pizza Roll. And it is talking about Matt Frazier back whenever he was kind of kind of starting out he's with his mom um his um, um who's his manager and she's supposedly psychic and her mom was supposedly psychic yeah well so there's a couple of interesting things that happen in this video and we'll talk about them when we come back from from the video but I think you'll find this fascinating um I I thought it was interesting and I want to show you some other stuff that I've talked about about Matt Frazier in the past and I think this will be interesting as well so check out this video it is by San Francisco Chronicle as I said it's probably five or six years old by now I'm recording this on the 20th of February 2024 and uh, let's talk about it in a minute so Make your notes and let's come back and we'll talk about you know, it. I was scared. I was only three, four years old and having all these people coming to me wanting to pass messages. And, you know, here I was, you know, pulling the covers over my head. I didn't want to see. I didn't want to hear the departed. That changed as Matt grew older. And instead of running from what he calls his gift, he embraced it, especially since Matt's mother, Angela, says she too is psychic. And so was her mother, Matt's late grandmother. Angela remembers what her mother told her at the hospital the day Matt was born. When she went to go see him in the hospital and they, the nurses put the baby in her arms, she looked at him and she says, Angela, he's one of us, you know. And I knew, I knew he would be um, a psychic as well. But he's very strong. My son is very, very gifted. I feel he's stronger than me now. Matt recently held an event in Manchester at the Radisson Hotel, where this crowd of folks came hoping to hear from a family member or a friend who died. Sometimes all it takes is a little nugget of information for people to believe. This woman wanted to hear from her grandmother. Who goes to the casino? Well, what's with the casino trips? My parents, her daughter, they go to Foxwoods all the time. Can you check to see what I have on the schedule for Monday? When Matt is not holding events, he and his mother share an office in the Boston area where they both conduct readings over the phone. We caught up with Matt to learn about what so many believe is his extraordinary ability. They come through in many different ways. Sometimes I'll I'll hear voices or I'll hear or I'll hear names, dates and places, or other times they'll show show me things. So the way that they kind of use me is just kind of as um, a channel to reach their loved one. So I'll feel things, I'll see things, I'll hear things. Any way that they can pass the message on to me, like when I felt your father, I felt it right in my chest, which was his way of just letting me know that that's how he had passed. Which brings us to what happened five minutes after I walked into Matt's house when he looked at me and said he knew instantly my father had passed away. A lot of times they'll transition like to when he was talking about you being by the water and like the family all together and music being played and things like that is the times that he's remembering and he also shows me card games here as well. Matt definitely stirred up real memories but he acknowledges he expects many people to look at him with disbelief. Well I think that everybody's skeptical at first you know when they want to when they come to an event they are absolutely skeptical because they want to know that you know what you're saying to them is the truth they want validation they don't want generalities so I think it's absolutely healthy that people do walk in as skeptics because you know hearing from their loved ones really just changes things you see the transformation that occurs hearing a message that brings them that is so close to the heart okay give me one second all right, I definitely have a male that's stepping forward here that's around you. Was this your dad that passed? My brother. Your brother, okay. Because he steps forward like really protective over you like as I'm right here. And he definitely tells me here like there was nothing that you could have done before his passing. Matt's events almost always sell out. There is never a guarantee everyone in the room will get a reading. Matt says he is never sure who is going to come forward. And often more than one spirit comes through at the same time. Matt has an easy way about him and a sense of humor that puts nervous people at ease. So if anyone else wants to see it, if you have anything good in here, we can look through. Oh, and I'm dropping everything as we're going. When Matthew walks into the room, you can feel his love. You know, he has that smile on his face, and he's just so full of love. 
and, and you see how the people, how they react to Matthew, they immediately get calmer and in inner peace, and you can see it in the room. Nobody knows. Do you ever want to turn the voices off and say, I want to just, tell you about I need some, I need a break? Sometimes, sometimes it gets, it that gets to that point. But also, you know, I'm always there to listen as well. That would be her godson that's here in this world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and listen he did at the Radisson when Matt repeated something so personal about the tragic murder of this woman's sister, you could clearly see the impact. She definitely shows me handcuffs in front of me, which shows me here that it's all right. All right. Carmen Nunez believes with Matt's help, she connected with her late sister, and now she feels relief. You know, all this time you wonder, you know, how is she? You know, did she go in peace? Is she at peace now? Because she didn't have any in this life. So it was my hope that in this afterlife that she is at peace and that she is happy. And that's the sense that I have today. I don't know why they choose to talk to me, but to be honest with you, I don't know where I would be without them because it's been such a major asset to my life, you know, to be able to help people. And it's so wonderful, you know, the, just the messages of comfort, joy, and inspiration that are passed on to the, those families here. And to see them getting closure and actually being able to connect with their loved ones again, it's just, it's a huge honor. Hey, what did you think of that? So, Please leave your comments in the um, comments of this video. I really appreciate that. I love this little community of um, that's developing around this channel. It's it's fascinating what you see. I cut out the part about the sixth sense, which they showed clips from the movie The Sixth Sense that came out years and years ago, and I cut that out just for time reasons and because it might be copyright. I don't know. And so uh, Matt, what they say about it is is Matt compares himself to the little boy in the sixth sense that he sees dead people everywhere and that he used to hide under the blankets and things like that so yeah sure matt um some of the interesting things that happened in there that i noticed we'll see what do you think is that the reporter who he knows darn well is coming to interview him um shows up and he knows right away that her father was dead now you notice that the reporter doesn't give any other kind of uh, information, doesn't say, oh, and then he knew that we used to do this and he knew his name was this or anything like that. He just says, she, he knows dad is dead. And this is his way of uh, giving, I, I noticed about the chest and this is his way. I swear we could, <laughs> Matt says the same things all the time. The phrases he said five years ago are the same damn phrases he's saying right now. Matt, he says to me, Matt, <laughs> Matt, he says to me, and this is, <laughs> never mind, never mind. Okay, he knows the reporter's coming to interview him. How hard is it to look up that person and get some information about him? He obviously needs to impress the reporter coming to the house. And it's not the first time we've seen him do hot readings. There's a video on my channel of him hot reading a uh, reporter that he did so he mostly cold reads and that's his expertise but he will hot read when he needs to it didn't seem like it was all that interesting or maybe the reporter just didn't want to um, talk about the details of it but for whatever reason it doesn't really matter he looked her up okay he's so matt says he's happy about being people coming to the events that are skeptical. He's talked about skepticism uh, many times about how he thinks it's a great thing and so on. I'm not exactly sure that the word skeptical means the same thing to him as it does to the rest of the world of, um, because he makes, he says when they come, they're skeptical and that they want to get a reading to prove that they are, they're in contact with the dead um if you're paying a couple hundred bucks and you've taken several hours out of your time and a lot of these people have to you know it's not their hometown so they're driving in to go to these events if you're going to go to that much trouble you probably already believe in mediumship it's unlikely that there's a lot of people who are truly skeptical that are attending the events that are not having the last name gerbic or sent by somebody whose last name is gerbic uh you think it's just something a lot of these psychics will say, these mediums will say is that, oh, yeah, we love the skeptics. I've turned people into believers all the time. It happens all the time. Okay, well, like I said, I don't think the word skeptic means the same thing. 
um, first thing out of his mouth. Now, remember, he's not editing this video. So the reporter is probably going to the show and seeing the reading and was allowed to record. And that's why you see a lot of the people's back of their heads um, uh, because uh, they don't have permission to film the people who um, accept the people they interviewed, which, of course, they did get their permission from. So first thing he says is something about a dad, and it turns out it's a brother. Like, oh, yeah, because I was seeing a man come through. A male. Well, there's no males. I mean, what are the odds that some male would be associated with somebody's life? I mean, I mean, come on. Jeez, what are the chances of that? That a male, an older male would be associated with somebody, especially if they had died. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes more than one spirit comes through at the same time. Wow. That's, that's. Really? Okay. That's the excuse you use when you fuddle it all up and you're confused and things are a mess. Oh, they're all trying to come through at the same time. This thing about turning it on and off. Oh, come on. Really? Um, and okay. So one of the things I wanted you to notice, I hope you noticed in the video, is that uh, he's very charismatic, as his mother says. He is very he's easy to talk to. He's very engaging. I'm sure if you were sitting on an airplane and he was your seatmate, I'm sure it'd be very interesting, even if it had nothing to do with psychics or mediums or anything like that. He's easy to talk to. He's engaging. He's friendly. Um, he's got a charming personality. Um, people do um, find him, um, I think, um, engaging. And he has this way of, uh, using physical contact. And I've seen this in person a few times and you can see it on these videos. Now, I, I don't know if he still does it as much where he, he touches people a lot, but I think he usually will ask now, you know, can I give you a hug? Your, your dead person wants me to hug you, but you can see it in the video where he's doing a lot of the reaching out and touching of the people and things like that. It's, it's a, it's a very personal way of engaging with people in an emotional moment. It also helps to probably bring on the tears in the same way when you're watching a human being and they're starting to get emotional, you feel like you, you might be at that point, especially when you've done thousands of readings like he has, you can see, you know, think of the time that, that you're trying to hold it together and somebody comes up to you and says, are you okay? Is everything okay? And then you lose it, right? So he's he's able to see when these people are very emotional and then he can kind of reach out to them and touch them and that, boom, that brings out the floodgates. Just in the same way as you'd bring out a box of Kleenex when you see they're at that moment and then it gives them a permission to go ahead and lose it and flood the tears come on. Because by bringing out the Kleenex, we're saying, here's the Kleenex. We know that it's likely that you're going to cry right now and it's okay. Go ahead and cry. Everybody does. Here's the Kleenex, you know, that kind of thing. Um, he mentioned, they mentioned the Radisson, which is a hotel. And that always makes me think this man is communicating with the dead. He says, do you think he'd really be performing at the Radisson at a sold out crowd? Even if, if that sold out crowd is 500 people, no, you would not be performing at a hotel somewhere communicating with the dead. Think about the power that would be a person would have if they could communicate with the dead. And they certainly would not be hanging out at a hotel somewhere with your mom as the manager. It's, it's, it, it, it defies logic to think that that communication with the dead would be so, um, benign so matter of fact and well of course he's talking to the dead haven't you seen the sixth sense you know there was there was one part in here where a woman she visually gets very upset on the screen and she looks like she's going to pass out when he mentions handcuffs and then he interviews her later and i thought oh what's going to happen with that and nothing ever comes out of it really but it was an um we don't know what led up to that. That was definitely a very physical reaction the woman had. We don't know if 
it was alluded to in the conversation he's having with her that the woman had a very tough life and had possibly had been in jail, had been arrested, and so on. It, it, it she does say later that her her sister had a very tough life and a very bad, you know, a tough life. So somewhere in there that could have been we only see a, a snippet of it that there could have been something about her life uh you know in and out of prison or in and out of jail and so when he mentioned handcuffs she just lost it and so um for a clip that was brilliant if you clip it to just that little bit and there's no other context in there but you and i and the cat we all know we, we know darn well there was a lot more to that exchange that was left out so I want to show you a few things, but I'm hoping you're um, going to leave your comments of things you saw that I didn't see or I didn't mention um, in in the video comments. But I have a couple things I want to show you. Let's see. One of the things I talked about the other day in one of the other videos was this thing that he does, and it is a visual thing. And Mark Edward noticed it when we were talking about why does he do that? And Mark explained because Mark is a professional mentalist. And then I looked and I have a photo of Matt doing this and it's up on Matt Frazier's Wikipedia page. I thought it was interesting. So I want to show it to you and explain this a little bit more. Um, it's a little grainy and I did have to, I, I blurred the faces of the people in the picture because obviously I didn't have permission at the moment to take that photo. Um, but this, um, no, Kenny takes this picture. I'm sorry. Let me blow it up so it's as big as, big as I could get it. Okay, well, uh, you may have to stop and blow it up yourself. But let me show you this. So... And I might go back and forth. Let's see. So what he does, and he did this in the Operation Peach Pit, which is in the article from the New York Times, Kenny Biddle and his people attended this event. And what he typically does is, or he did before the pandemic, I don't know if he's still doing it. He has his audience facing each other. So like there's a, it's quarter, it's like, a, you know, one quarter here, one quarter there, one quarter, it's in four quarters and then um they face each other and so he can walk amongst the middle of it and then you're looking across at this other group of people basically what he tends to do is the the rows are a lot of the times about 10 people wide and he will have the people in a row stand up and then he tends to stand in a 45 degree angle from the people standing up and then what he does is he as he's got them standing up he'll make a statement and he makes that statement some kind of um it was barnum statement so something that sounds specific but it's not specific when you really start thinking about it in other words it'd probably apply to many people in the audience like the video i did yesterday um, who is Barbara? I think what he did is he said, you know, is there a Barbara here? Uh, somebody who's close to there. There's somebody named Barbara who's trying to come through. And, and if you've got a group of 10 people standing up, then you, one of those 10 or one of the people behind that 10 or one of those people right in front of the 10 is probably going to have an effect. And if it doesn't, then you just move on to another statement or make it more broad or say, oh, no, I must be the another part of the room. I think what I'm getting now is somebody who is a um, opera, who who is, what's this about opera? You know, whatever the statement he's saying, it's um, it seems like it might be specific to somebody, likely to be specific to somebody, the law of large numbers. And Matt has this thing with the finger where he's pointing at people, as I showed you in the photo that Kenny uh, uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. And this might help because I had, I'd forgotten I had done a video, I mean, an article for Skeptical Inquirer on this, and it just dawned on me that maybe this would be something out here I could show you. This is an article I wrote called 
10 tricks of the psyche because I bet you didn't know. And here, and I'll put the link to this in the um, description underneath this video. Okay, this is me very fancy drawing in pencil and paper. So here is 10 people standing up. That's my 10 people with their little heads and stick bodies. <laughs> I flunked Pictionary. I mean, I can't draw, right? So if the psychic is standing in front of the 10 people and he slowly raises his hand to say he's getting a, he's getting a, a message from somebody. And as I say here at the top, I say um, an audience row that has a casino with 10 people in it. The psychic asks, asks the entire row to stand up. He points at the row and makes a statement and somebody reacts to the statement. You know, their face changes or they get this look like <gasps> a startled look. He's pointing right at that person. How is that done? Amazing, right? So if he was pointing to these 10 people and he's standing in front of them, then when he's raising his hand and making the statement, who was it who had a miscarriage? What's this about twins? Um, was there somebody who had a fishing accident and or somebody died and their body was never recovered? Statements that feel very specific to a person, but not really that specific. If you're raising your hand and, and you'd have to watch him do this. Um, usually the videos you see on on his channel, he's already found the person he's going to uh, talk to and they're already standing there with a the microphone. You have to almost go to one of his events to see. At least, like I say, I've been talking about this for a while now, so maybe he stopped doing it. I don't know. But you raise your hand and as you're talking and you're making that statement, it does look like you're pointing right to them. I do have some audio. I think it's up on the channel already. Um, I recorded and a woman you can hear her saying, are you, are you pointing to me? <laughs> because she couldn't quite tell. <laughs> anyway, if he was doing that, his hand is, is moving in a way where it's more obvious that he's moving his hand right and left, depending on who he's pointing at. But if the psychic is standing off to the side, like at a 45 degree angle, and then they point at the people, then when your hand is up up straight, it doesn't move as much. It's, it's just like an inch or two, almost something that could be hidden with your movement of your hand. And what that means is that the person, like, instead of like this, and you're, and you're like, who is it who had, um, who had a, somebody who, with a hot, hot air balloon? And, and then the person who reacts in the group of 10 is over here somewhere. You know, he has to move his hand over towards them this way. But if, and he's like, who is it who had the hot air balloon? You see the arm moving back and forth a lot. Whereas if you're at an angle and you're pointing like this and there's a group of people at an angle from you and you're pointing, then it's like, who had the hot air balloon accident or who was in a hot air balloon or something? Then your hand only has to move a little bit and it looks like you're pointing at the person who has a reaction, either the person or the person behind them or the person in front of them, because whoever's going to have that reaction, like, oh, my gosh, he's going to say, that's it. Not you people. It's the person behind. I knew it was somebody in the audience right in this area. So anyway, I thought that visual might help a little bit. And like I said, I'll put the uh, I'll put this link up so that you can look at my beautiful illustration. But Mark Edward figured that out. But then he's a mentalist, so that's the kind of thing he does. Another thing I thought would be kind of interesting in the clip we just I just showed you, um, his mom's all very chatty to the San Francisco uh, Chronicle and so on. But now in two thousand and 19, um, the New York Times article was released. Now, somewhere in, this is in February 2019. And let me tell you, it takes a very long time to get one of these articles written, especially for the magazine. I mean, it is very uh, tight the way these things handle. They don't just whip out an article. It, it takes months to write these things and it has so many revisions and they have to double check things and they have to interview people. It's 
it's a lot. I, I, I've been through the process. I know this is not a, a quick thing that just has turned out. I mean, I guess an opinion or some of these articles that are on a certain subject, but these in-depth articles like this, it's, it's a lot longer um, process. Now I'm going to show you this article and I've mentioned this multiple times, but um, this isn't just about Thomas John. It is also about uh, Matt Frazier. So um, in this article, and I will give you a link to this, I, I'll look for my archive link. So in case you don't have a, um, a subscription to the New York Times, you can still read it. But one of the things you'll notice in this article, remember what is missing, because that's really where the meat of whatever it is you're trying to learn. Think about that. What's missing? So one of the things that happens is he interviews, the reporter um, interviews uh, Thomas John. And Thomas John talks about, you know, he says, oh, well, I, no, that was all wrong. And I, I, you know, he says this thing, whatever it is Thomas John says in this article. And what is missing is there's no quotes from Matt Frazier. And the reason why there's no quotes from Matt Frazier is because his mom wouldn't allow him to talk to the reporter from the New York Times. 2019. This is before his TV show, Beat the Frasers, came out. Imagine that. There's a New York Times article, a uh, reporter from the New York Times magazine, you know, million views, something like that. And you're not going to talk to him. You're going to tell your son, no, I'm sorry, you can't talk to this guy because it's involving you, somebody coming to one of your shows. And I, I assume that the angle was that there was a sting aimed at him and so there's no mention uh there's tons of mention of matt frazier in this but there's no quote from matt frazier because he's a coward and he's talked about that in a few other times not that he's a coward but he's a coward right so maybe it was the right thing to do because uh i don't think it went well for <laughs> thomas john and thomas john is the one that was mostly caught in this article um pointed out in this article but uh, Matt Frazier doesn't come off looking all that great either. But uh, we didn't catch Matt Frazier hot reading anybody. But then Matt Frazier rarely hot reads. He will, but he wasn't. My team was able to go and meet with Matt Frazier, get books signed under fictitious names and photographs and everything else with him. So he was caught. He didn't know that there was a group of six that we had sent in to catch him in a hot reading you don't hang around and have pictures taken. I mean, he stayed late and hanging out with this guy, getting pictures taken and so on, uh, and getting their books autographed using fake names. And you're supposed to be able to be this great psychic. Okay, no, don't even don't even go there with me. Okay, so I will put a link to this article in here. But one of the things that um, I thought you would find interesting is there are Always, if you look at Matt Frazier's website or his YouTube channel, you will see lots and lots of best-selling author and, you know, and on and on. He had a TV show one season. What was it, like six episodes or something like that? Meet the Frazier. Apparently, he's doing really well financially, by the way. Another video I put up, he said, oh, I'm getting... Oh, my wife and I, you know, we just bought a house and we're having a pool installed and Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's money in my mind. I'm getting a pool installed. Okay, you're doing all right. Um, so here, here is something else I thought would be fascinating. Now, I talk about Wikipedia all the time because that is kind of my thing. Is um, not an expert, but um, I do spend an awful lot of time with Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia. I think this is the last thing I'm going to talk about on Matt Fraser. So, so bear with me. Wikipedia is one of the best places to judge fame, popularity, um, clicks, that kind of thing. It's 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 the ultimate place that is um, designed, well, not designed, but it, it it allows you, if you know the right tricks, I'm going to show you it right now, to to visualize how much in the news a person is. So if you are, and, and you probably know this too, if you guys are um, have anything to do with 
wanting knowledge of any kind, you're watching TV or you're reading a book or there's um, a song comes on the radio or whatever, and you want to know something about that that song, that book, the point of history, the person that's appearing on there, and you think something like, you know, wait, how old is she now? Or where did she go to school? Or wait, what what year did that happen in? You know, you're looking for a little bit of information and you're either going to go directly to Wikipedia because it's there's no pop-up ads. There's, you know, it's a nice benign place to get some generic information about a thing, person, place, year, whatever. And, or you're going to go and you're going to Google that, you know, or Siri or whatever. And you're going to say, hey, what year was that, that Super Bowl? Or I thought that person was no longer with so-and-so or how many kids did they actually have? Or what, what, what part of what part of the country are they from? Boy, that accent sounds familiar. Are they really from Germany? I, I, I thought they were, you know, whatever it is. And you might Google it and it's going to give you most likely a Wikipedia uh, link at the top of the, of the ratings. I mean, it might be their website or their Twitter zitter account or their, Facebook account or something like that, but you're not necessarily going to find the information on, on a personal site, like, you know, um, how old they are or something like that. But Wikipedia, generally you will. So anybody who's in the news or anything like that, large sums of people will go to Wikipedia to find out information. So there is a way of tracking that. Now, anybody who has a Wikipedia page, like Matt Fraser has a Wikipedia page. Um, oh, and this is the other really it's better than Google Trends or Google um, Analytics because it has to, the way this tracks, it goes right to that specific page. Everything is sent to that page. So like Matt Frazier, I think there's a hockey player named Matt Frazier. And so if you're doing Google Trends, you're you're not sure you're getting the right Matt Frazier whenever you're doing these kinds of things. But with Wikipedia tracking, uh, page view analysis, it's going right to that specific page. How many times, here's the question, how many times has the page been looked at by um, people? How many times has it been accessed? And I'm going to show you, I'll give you a link to this too. It's, it's, it's not uh, proprietary or anything like that. It's, it's an um, open sourced thing and it's fairly easy to use. It's called page view analysis. And what it does is you can enter up to 10 pages here. Now the pages you have to put in here have to be specifically exactly the name of the Wikipedia page. So for example, here's a Wikipedia page for Matt Frazier. It is called Matt Frazier. Um, psychic because you don't want to be confused with the hockey player or anybody else it has to be specifically that so here is apparently there is a wikipedia page called meet the frasers this is the name of the wikipedia page so we can copy it and we can put it into this page view analysis and what it's going to do is it's going to tell see sometimes it'll pull up exactly what you're looking for so you know you have the specific specific one and what it will do is it will give you this, this graph. Now, there's different ways of changing this around if you like statistics, which I do. And you can look at this and you can see how many times have has this Wikipedia page been accessed. It does not tell you if it's the same person going over and over. It doesn't tell you if they're only on there for a couple seconds. It's just how many times it's been accessed. And if you compare it to other things in the world, you can see... Um, what I mean uh, as far as it goes. So let's, let's dial into these stats a little bit. So this blue line, hopefully you can see this pretty well. This is the Matt Frazier. So he's blue and this is blue. And you can see that the most hits he's ever had, and this is from 2019 to 2024. This is how long his Wikipedia page has existed. And the most views he's ever, ever had was 4,000 on one day. 4,000 people looked at his Wikipedia page on this one day and back in January of 2020, which is probably whenever Meet the Frasers was becoming a thing. And 
if you look at this, the green line for the show is pretty, pretty weak. So down here a little bit further, um, his Wikipedia page during that time, since it's existed, is 417,000. So 417,000, and you know, a bunch of them are my views, but <laughs> it's neither here nor there. Um, on average, he's getting about 250 page views a day. Um, but that's offset because of this giant spike when the TV show came out. If you look and you kind of mouse over this, you can see they're they're probably closer to, I don't know, 180 page views a day. That's like nothing, really. And the Meet the Fraser show, the height of it was up here in the 200s or something that looked at the page. And the most of the time it's in the 60s, 30s, 20s. It's it's gets tw an average of 24 views a day. So that's pretty, pretty weak. Weak tea, very weak tea. Now let's do, a, now I haven't, I, I'm trying to, as I've been talking to you, I've been trying to think of somebody who was in the news kind of out of the blue. And I remember, was it the Grammys that just happened? Is, is that who it was? The Grammys that just happened. And I think they had a surprise with um, with a, a woman who appeared. And I think she was uber famous in the past. And here she appears on stage with another singer and she sings her own song. She was in the jeans and she's playing the guitar and everybody. And then I saw afterwards in... Um, multiple newspapers like Washington Post and New York Times, people are like, oh, where has she been? Oh my gosh, what happened to her? Will she come back? And I think her name is Tracy Chapman. Is that her name? So I haven't looked yet. So let's look, and this will give you an idea of what I mean. Let's go back over to that same page. Let's take out the Meet the Frasers because I'm going to just take it out. You can put up to 10 pages on here. So we get to see, is it Tracy, T-R-A-C? Yeah, look at, look at, it's almost... I just got TRAC and it's automatically going to Tracy Chapman. Look at that. Can you see that? So Tracy Chapman is this green thing here. And here along, there's a couple little blips of a thousand or a few thousand. And it's the same time range that I had for Mount Fraser. A little tiny bit over here, a spike of five, a hundred thousand. Looks like it's a hundred thousand there. And then on, this must be the night that they had the Grammys, because look at that. It went to almost a million page views. See how that looks? So there's almost a, here's, here's a million, here's 900,000. So it hits almost a million page views on one day because she appeared on the Grammys. So if you look, Tracy Chapman in that same amount of time that Thomas, I mean, uh, Matt Frazier has been, had a Wikipedia page. She's got over 9,500,000 page views. So um, on a daily average, which Kate takes in effect, this Grammy's a giant spike, um, seven, 5,709 views. So don't tell me that he's some superstar and don't tell me that he's award-winning and uh, bestseller and all that nonsense, because that's BS. This is just what they say. Anybody who's communicating with the dead, who's doing something amazing, like out of the world, uh, Nobel Prize, change science uh, everywhere we know, everything we know about science, everything we know about everything in the world would be changed overnight if there was any evidence at all the people can communicate with the dead and they certainly wouldn't be doing shows for 400 people or 200 people or 500 people at a radisson somewhere with their mom as a manager i'm sure that's not true anymore um and they certainly would be getting more than a million page views a day so if they were out there wandering around in public which you know they wouldn't just think of that kid from the from the sixth sense He's wandering around and all the dead are trying to get a hold of him to solve crimes and be in touch with people and so on. And here, <laughs> he would be like a, a target because there's nobody who's ever committed a crime would want him around. They wouldn't want him alive. 
because they know that he would be able to get in touch with the victims. It's only a matter of time before so-and-so comes forward and tells you who, where my body's at, who committed the crime and gives you the evidence. I mean, you couldn't walk free. You couldn't be at the Radisson. I mean, it just blows me away that people try to have this argument with me. And they, they, it's just silly. I know, I know, I know. I have great sympathy for these people who are in immense pain and they feel like they're getting some kind of comfort in it. And they feel like um, they're grieving. And it's, it's a horrible thing feeling of grief and you've always believed that you can communicate with the dead because you were raised that way but it's not true all right so wanting it to be does not make it real so 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 sad can you guys think of another let me think let me think of another name let's see if something occurs to me that we could try and put in here um, but the, I think that's a good illustration because Tracy Chapman just all of a sudden was like, "What? Tracy Chapman's there? What? What? Oh, what?" Um. Well, let's look at Sylvia Brown. She's been a dead since two thousand and um. She'd been dead for a long time. When did she die? I don't know, but here, look at this little spike of hers in 2020. Okay, let's take Tracy Chapman out because she's really just skewing the results. You can't even see anything because of her spike. Okay, so the green is Sylvia Brown. So the woman's been dead for years, all right? And she's got a 100,000 100, views back in 2020. And she's got over 100,000 views in 2021 for a day. And those, I think, were during the pandemic. There was this there was a story that came out that she supposedly predicted COVID. It turned out to be true, you guys. Look up Ben Radford. He does an analysis of it. It wasn't true, but it really made everybody go, what? Yeah, you would think one of the psychics would have predicted COVID, but none of them did. If you look here, Sylvia Brown, on average, she's getting 1,130 page views a day. And Matt's getting just like... 251 page views a day that's like nothing i mean it's it really is nothing just like it, it's nothing it's piddly and in the same time almost all this time she's been dead her page has already gotten over 1 million views almost 2 million views that he's got not even half a million views so what happens when here you hit clear and what will appear when you turn on this, when you come to this page, it's going to give you, oops, usually it gives you cat and dog right here. And that's the default. And then you have to clear it and put, take it out and put whatever Wikipedia page name you want in there. That's how that works. It's really interesting. It's a great tool to understand what is popular at this moment. And again, it's like Thomas John is a hard one to, um, do a Google search on because Thomas John is is um commonish name, so you have to put Thomas Thomas John psychic Thomas John medium, to, you know, to get to find the Thomas John you're talking about. But if you're looking at a Wikipedia page, it's called a certain thing, so it's really easy to be able to narrow it down that we're looking at the right thing. So this has been my like catch up of uh, Matt Frazier. Yes, I, I talked about recently that um, I got a takedown notice, a copyright infringement on Matt Frazier, um, LLC. And um, I just took down the videos. It's not that important to me. I put them out. They were out for months. You guys hopefully saw them. I can do these analysis over and over and over again. Um, I'm not famous and so you know i get 50 60 150 200 views on a video i i assume you guys have already looked at these things and i'm becoming less and less impressed with them um, the videos i'm seeing on matt fraser's channel are weak tea i i i'm bored 
these are the recent videos i'm there's so far nothing shazamming me of any way the the headlines the titles of these things look amazing and then you go and you look at it and you're like he's just basically going uh-huh 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 yeah that's what she's telling me uh-huh uh-huh yeah she just told me that yeah because that's what he said and he said just said to me matt i'm telling you this it's there it's like they're not even trying and i feel that from um thomas john too there was a video uh podcast that just came out ono ross and carrie and they just uh looked at um uh thomas john it was a year ago and as i'm listening to it and i if you look at my videos you'll see i talked about the ono ross and carrie video so you know where it is but as I'm listening to him do this thing, I'm thinking, oh my God, he's so lazy. It's not even, he's not even trying. He's not, it's, 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 is it, it's just like he's given up. I guess how I feel that he's just given up. I don't know if that's true or not. I might just be me. I'm jaded because I've looked at so many hours of videos and I haven't seen anything nobody's coming out with any good evidence i ask people they they come on my channel and they say oh well i had this reading and it was amazing and i and oh my gosh i saw the and the, and i say here's my email let's see it crickets nobody wants to send it to me either they don't come back and look at the comment that i've responded to them or they don't have audio or anything or they don't want to pony up their their evidence of this great reading i don't know why you wouldn't give it to me i mean if you could prove that you have some amazing um evidence well i would shout the praises of that because that would be amazing i would wow can you imagine being the person who finds the psychic who can do amazing things All right, everybody, I hope you like this. I kind of rambled a little bit, but I wanted to kind of sum up a lot of the Matt Frazier stuff. And, and I had a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. And, you know, um, I hope to talk to you guys soon. Please leave me comments. I'm, I'm waiting right now. I am there watching for them right now. I'm using my psychic powers. <laughs> Take care, everyone.